Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Waffle, where we basically go over everything that's happened over the past week. I'm joined by Callum, Ashley and Tom. And first up, we are going to go through all of the Premier League results and some of the topics on the way through. So on the Monday night, we had uh, Tottenham claim a 1-0 victory over Everton with uh, Michael Keane deflecting it into his uh, own net, uh, giving Tottenham the win in probably a game with terrible quality in it. Then on Tuesday, Crystal Palace 2, Chelsea 3. Uh, Wilfred Zaha with an absolute rocket into the top right-hand corner to give Chelsea, but Chelsea got all three points. Uh, Watford then claimed a crucial 2-1 win over Norwich and Arsenal had a 1-1 draw um, at home to Leicester with Enketia getting sent off, um, which was very, which was debated a lot uh, in the footballing community as to whether it was or whether it wasn't. I believe Arsenal have appealed it, but I don't think, I don't think they've got it. Uh, and then on the Wednesday, Manchester City run right again at the Etihad claiming a 5-0 win over Newcastle United. And there is some news about Manchester City to do with UEFA. Uh, about coming out tomorrow. Ashley, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so the UEFA ban decision is tomorrow at 9.30. Obviously, City um, over-exaggerated the amount of money they made from sponsors, which then could proceed to them getting banned from the Champions League. Uh, this would this happened, this first happened five months ago, I believe. Uh, this could mean that, obviously, fifth place get the Champions League due to the have the has to be four English teams in the competition. Um uh, there's been some news come out that City were not cooperating with the investigation, which obviously uh, makes it harder for them to get the appeal. Uh, so I don't, I, I don't know what to what to think at the moment, but I don't think they're going to get the uh, they're going to get it uh, reversed. Okay, and then uh, the rest of the Wednesday's results were Sheffield United beating Wolves one nil, West Ham losing at home to Burnley one nil, and Liverpool claiming a three one win away at Brighton. Then on Thursday, uh, Everton claimed a 1-1 draw at home to Southampton. Um, and then Bournemouth claimed a 0-0 draw at home to Tottenham, uh, in which Jose Mourinho did not end up doing the press conference. Ashley, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so obviously drawing against Bournemouth when you are a top, when you are supposed to be a top six team, it's going to be frustrating <laughs> um, after the game. In a press conference, Mourinho couldn't hear anyone very clearly. He was answering stupid questions. Um, <laughs> the one of the other people was like, "Can you hear me?" Mourinho goes, "No," and walks out. So he's obviously getting to his head the whole Tottenham job, and obviously he's getting frustrated with everything. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I believe there was a bad decision in that game that caused a lot of controversy as well. I think Bournemouth, but well, Bournemouth should have scored, or Tottenham. Uh, I think Tottenham should have scored, but. Um, <laughs> well, they got a penalty, wasn't it? Because wasn't Bournemouth Tottenham one of the games that they said that they got wrong? Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Yeah. Then the other game on the Thursday was Aston Villa nil, Manchester United three, and I think we are going to give actually a bit more, to, another amount of time, two weeks in a row, to highlight Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood is a beast. <laughs> um, it's another free one. It's another three nil win for United, which it shows how consistent we are. And he's not changed the lineup in four games. But why would you? If you're winning, if you're winning every game by a three goal margin. You wouldn't change the lineup. It don't fix what's not broken. And Mason Greenwood showed again his class, scoring a right footed shot. It was an absolute rocket past Pepe Reina. Obviously, Pogba scored in this game as well, which is a huge, a huge. Uh, it's huge for United. Uh, Bruno Fernandes should have scored a header. He did, he did get one in this game, but he should have scored a header. Juan Bastaka should have scored a header and Martial hit the cross there. So it could have been six, uh, but obviously it's, it, it doesn't go our way sometimes. But we have we, we take a 3-0 win. So. <laughs> and now we're pushing Leicester for this third place spot and Chelsea, obviously. So see where it goes from here. Yeah, so there was, then, uh, there was no game on Friday. So we move in to Saturday in which 17 goals were scored in the five games uh, and early kickoffs we had Watford claiming a 2-1 win at home to Newcastle through two Troy Deeney penalties and Norwich were condemned have been condemned to the championship they are relegated first team relegated they have been poor all season losing 4-0 at home to West Ham United uh, and someone scored four goals actually can you tell us who that is and how good they were 
Mikel Antonio was an absolute beast in this game. He was not taking any prisoners. I'm not calling him Antonio like Harvey would want me to. <laughs> yeah, Mikel Antonio was a different animal in this game. Uh, would not. He didn't take a shot, which wasn't on target. I didn't end up in a goal. Um, I think he's the first player to do it for. I think I think since 2016, 17. But yeah, yeah, he's in. What a game for Antonio, and obviously Norwich. It's unfortunate for them, but they just did. They haven't been good enough this season. Obviously, the worst team in the Premier League by far. Uh, but yeah, Mikel Antonio deserves all the plaudits for that game. Absolutely amazing. Yep. So I, I, Norwich are down. I do believe they will be back up in like a season or two because uh, you know, and um, then we go on to Liverpool one, Burnley one. Liverpool's winning streak. Ending as the and it is, uh, it's only right that we go to the Liverpool fan. <laughs> Can you tell us about Liverpool Burnley? Yes, so we saw early on in the half Robertson with a beautiful whipped header from quite a quite an acute angle. I have to give him props now, not the player you'd expect to score, especially a header, but a good goal. But I think the man of the match on the big talk for the game was Nick Pope, absolutely world class, even as a Liverpool fan, I have to say. Absolutely world class performance from him. I think obviously he did concede, but he is I think joint joint top clean sheets in the league now for Golden Glove. Yeah. Um, obviously this means that he's got to be in contention for the Euros next season, especially with seeing um, the poor form of um, Pickford. But yeah, he made some outstanding saves against Marnie and Salah, from, who were both I'm pretty sure hit powerful volleys from inside the six yard box. So that was quality from him, but. Yeah, obviously, uh, into the second half, we saw James Rodriguez score from a well a free kick, which was headed down, and then he hit it on the volley. But um, bit of controversy over that. Obviously, just before the water break, um, Salah and Mane were both wrongly off, given offside, which resulted in from that free kick, then scoring. So obviously, everyone calling it Liverpool, but I was not there to help us then, but. This that draw still means that we can beat City's record of 100 points in a season, but it does mean that we have to win our next three, our last three games, which are all against Arsenal, Chelsea, and Newcastle. So it's possible, but we'll have to wait and see. I think the next few uh, weeks in the Premier League are very interesting with the results coming up, and I think it's going to be a very continuing end to the season. Yeah, and rounding off Saturday as well, we had Sheffield United claim a 3-0 win at home to Chelsea. David McGoldrick scoring his first two goals ever in the Premier League. And then Brighton losing 5-0 at home to Manchester City. Uh, Raheem Sterling hat-trick as well. Then we move on to Sunday, first game of the day. Wolverhampton Wanderers 3, Everton 0. Callum, tell us about that and how you feel as an Everton fan. <sighs> It, it was just shambles. Like, even the team set up was just a word I'm not allowed to say on po- on the podcast. But it was just, he. I saw him put the lineup on. I was like, Baines is at centre back. We're playing three attacking midfielders in the middle. I just looked at it and I was talking to someone at the time and I went, Wolves are going to win 3 0. Looking at the team, we had no fight in the thing. They were abusing us through the middle. Obviously, we don't have Andre Gomez due to injury. We don't have Holgate due to injury as well, I believe. We don't have Kabamin due to injury. Like, if he's going to play this weird... If he's basically going to copy Arteta, then, you know, at, at least have the personnel for it. We didn't have the personnel for it, and we got punished. You know, it was simple as, really. It was um, The first goal was a penalty from Raul Jimenez that, you know, it was definitely a penalty, but I do feel like Pedence over-exaggerated it a little bit since Dinier does actually get the ball if you watch the replay. Like, I believe it was Jamie Redknapp, you know, everyone's favourite pundit, saying that Dinier kicked him. When if you watch the replay, Digne doesn't actually kick him at all. But yeah, it definitely was a penalty. And, you know, it was um, then it was in the 46th minute, which ironically, if you actually watch the game, technically they scored the second goal before the first goal because it was like 45-32 for the second goal and it was like 46-30 for the first goal because of the uh, stoppage time. So that was really strange. But yeah, it was a, we brought on uh, Young, I believe. I don't know if he's 18 now, um, Jared Graithwaite. And uh, he literally, within 30 seconds, lost Dendonka, even though Dendonka gave away a foul. Then lost Dendonka, even though he was stood right next to him, and they scored again. 
And then Diego Jota punished us. And yeah, we deserve to lose 100%. We literally, they literally had more shots on target than we had shots in the game. And it was just it was embarrassing for how well we had been doing. Now we seem to be falling with the game against Southampton, the game against Spurs, the game, you know, games that arguably we could have and should be winning. But, you know, uh, uh, that's just how it flows. You know, I'm going to have to wait for next season because it looks like this season is going to end in a similarly depressing fashion for Everton fans. But that's all I want to talk about before I cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we go into the next game. Aston Villa 2, Crystal Palace nil. Uh, nil. Uh, and it was a crunch game at the bottom where Villa gained a crucial win, uh, along with Crystal Palace. Uh, and some uh, an event happened before the game, which uh, unfortunately is not very good. Ashley, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, Wilfred Zaha this morning woke up to some messages from a 12-year-old uh, fan, or fan, uh, saying that uh, some very, very racist things to him. And uh, he posted them on his Instagram story, out with the boy, now the boy, who is 12 years old, may I add, has been arrested. Uh, he's gained 8,000 followers from it, and he's made his account private. Um, but yeah, he's been arrested for it. Wilfred Zaha, obviously, out with him. Uh, I think the guy was called Jack. But yeah, incredibly, incredibly stupid thing to do. Uh, and yeah, it's it, it's really sad to see that this is still happening. People are still getting these messages. Yeah, and then also from that game, I do want to mention VAR because Mohamedou, Mamadou Sacco's goal in the eighth minute, it comes off his shoulder and they give it as handball. I'm just saying they need the rules changing because that is on the complete other side of his arm to the hand. VAR sometimes is... Very stupid. Then we go over to probably the most built-up game of the week, Tottenham versus Arsenal, in which Tottenham claimed a 2-1 win. And if you were with us on the watch along for that, we really do appreciate it. And you would have seen all of our match reactions to that. Um, Ashley, can you just sum up the game for us? Um, yeah, the game was, in the first 10 minutes, it was quite quite play. Nothing was really happening. Um, after the first 10 minutes, the game opened up a lot more. Um Lacazette scoring an absolute screamer from outside the box with his left foot straight into the top left corner. Absolutely beautiful goal. And then about five minutes later, Kolasinac tries to play a pass back to David Luiz, but it's behind him. David Luiz is running this way. Ball comes this way. And uh, David Luiz runs past it. The ball goes behind him. Uh, Son latches onto it, chips over the keeper. And yeah, it was a great finish by Son, to be fair to him. Then we go after half time to... A corner which was whipped in by Harry Winks. Uh, I think I think it was Harry Winks, and then Alderweireld got his head on it, looping header over the keeper, and they, it finished two one. But I think Arsenal deserved the draw at least out of this game. I think they were they were they, they were very good on the counter attack and built the play up better than Tottenham. But Tottenham Tottenham held on uh, with the defence in the last minutes of the game. So yeah, it was a good game overall, but it was a it was a I don't think the result gives Arsenal enough credit that they deserve. Yeah, and then we go to the final Premier League game of this week, which is currently being played and nearing half-time as we record. Bournemouth versus Leicester. How has it been so far, actually? Oh, it's been... It's been all all Leicester. Bournemouth have not had a shot yet. <laughs> Bournemouth, I, I don't even think, have been inside their half once yet. But yeah, it's very frustrating because, obviously, United fan needed to get into the top four. It's got third, but... Yeah, Jamie Vardy scored uh, a very, very uh, ugly goal. <laughs> Been blocked on the line twice and Vardy stuck a foot out and got it in. But yeah, so far it looks like Leicester are going to win this one very comfortably. Right, and now we're going to go into the EFL where the championship uh, is very close at the moment. We're going to go to the top two race at the moment. Leeds are currently top as it stands on Sunday evening with 84 points. Second, West Brom with 81. Third, Brentford with 78. And fourth, Fulham with 76. Brentford have won their last seven in a row. So going into games top form. Leeds managed to get an 89th minute winner today uh, through Pablo Hernandez to put them top. Uh, and then Fulham beat Cardiff on Friday night's win. And then West Brom drew to Blackburn. So, um, and I believe Fulham are playing West Brom this week, I think. Uh, yeah, so Tuesday, West Brom are home to Fulham. Uh, so that will be a very big game. 
Um, so I think at the moment, I think Brentford are probably going to get promotion. I think Leeds, I think it's going to be Leeds and Brentford top four. I think Leeds have pulled away for that win today and I think they're just about going to tip it. Um, and then I think Brentford are going to get in there because I don't see West Brom continuing that form. And Fulham, I think, are going to get playoffs. I think they're just a little bit too far behind. Then we get to the playoffs. I think Nottingham Forest are fifth at the moment with 69 points. I think they're firmly there. Um, but we have probably sixth to twelfth are in it. We've got sixth with Cardiff with 64, seventh Swansea with 63, eighth Preston with 62, ninth Millwall with 62, tenth Derby with 61, eleventh Bristol City with 61, and twelfth Blackburn with 60, with three games to go. Uh, it's it's going to be mental for the playoff race. I think Cardiff are just about going to pip it, but Cardiff are playing Derby on Tuesday night, so that is also going to be a very very big game uh, and then the relegation scrap with if you really think about it it could probably go towards 14th because uh, Reading and QPR are probably safely mid-table but QPR are 16th but with Sheffield Wednesday 14th and Wigan 15th they both have uh, they might both get dot points Wigan might get dot 12 and Sheffield Wednesday are still waiting for a result from their financial fair play, which means they could also both get dragged in. Barnsley bottom with 43, 23rd Luton with 44, and 22nd Hull with 45, 21st Charlton with 46, 20th and 19th are Huddersfield and Middlesbrough, both with 47, Birmingham and uh, 18th and Stoke for 17th, both with 49. And then if Wigan, on, who are on 54, get deducted 12, they're now, they would then go bottom with 42, and the same with Sheffield Wednesday if they get top to 43. So, it could go up to genuinely 15th. They both get dot points, um, which is mental. But what's happened this week? Well, um, Derby have lost both of their games away at West Brom and at home to Brentford. And Ben Hamer has been at fault mainly for both of these losses. And Derby fans have not been happy on Twitter, causing him to delete his Twitter account, sending him personal abuse, um, which is really sad as Ben Hamer is a very experienced goalkeeper. Um, at this level. So it's a shame to see fans condemn him to this point. Um, and then obviously Leeds with the 1-0 win, Brentford are on top form and Sheffield Wednesday um, might be getting deducted points. Then on Monday night, we did have the League One playoff semi-final second legs in which we had Oxford 1-1 uh, one, one draw at home to Portsmouth and Wickham 2-2 two, two against Fleetwood. Wickham, because of their 4-1 win away at Fleetwood the uh, Thursday before, they have gone to Wembley 6-3 on aggregate and Oxford beat Portsmouth on penalties, setting up an Oxford United versus Wickham Wanderers playoff final. And both of them have not been, I believe Wickham may not have actually ever been in the championship and it's been a long time since Oxford last were. So it's nice to see a new team um, coming up this season. OK, and now for the last segment, we are going to go into Europe. The other two leagues besides the Premier League left to go out of the top five leagues is La Liga and Syria. And we're going to start with Syria uh, with Callum. Can you tell us more about Syria? Yes, I can. Um, it's been um, quite eventful for the teams towards the top. You know, we've seen teams maybe pushing towards the Europa League players, and we've seen a certain team in second place seem to just forget how to win their games. We've got Lazio losing 2 1 to na formerly 19th. I don't know if they are still 19th. Lecce. Then we move on. We had a big game with Juventus versus Inter Milan. Juventus going 2-0 up with an absolute screamer from Rabiot and Ronaldo scoring the second. For then Milan to make it a glorious comeback, Ibrahimovic getting a penalty, Kessier getting a goal, Javier Leal getting a goal and Rebic getting a goal. Interestingly, I believe with the Ibrahimovic goal, Ronaldo tried to sack him out. Ibrahimovic scored and then proceeded to start laughing at Ronaldo when he scored which is quite ironic towards the future. Um, Napoli were able to get a 2-1 win over Genoa. We saw Fiorentina draw one all with Cagliari. Atalanta picks up another win with Javier Toloi and Muriel picking up goals in a 2-0 win over Sampdoria. Sassuolo beat Bologna 2-1. Torino picked up a 3-1 win over Brescia. Roma absolutely dominated Parma with a 2-1 win with Mkhitaryan and Veritu getting two goals and Parma getting the one. Roma having 25 shots in that entire game. Udinese picked up a 3-0 win over Spal. Hellas Verona and Inter Milan drew two all with Inter Milan dropping more points, getting them even closer to being caught up to by 
um, Atalanta. Um, Lazio then proceeded to lose again, losing 2-1 again to Sassuolo, which is really not, which has basically ended their title hopes. It looks like um, Roma battered Brescia 3-0 with Fazio, Kalinic, and Zaniolo getting the goals, and then we moved to Genoa 2 and Spal 0, and then we have some games going on currently. Um, Bologna are leading 2-0 against Parma. Verona are leading 1-0 against Fiorentina. Cagliari and Lecce is 0-0. And Udinese and Sampdoria is 1-0. Then we move into the last game that I'm going to cover for you in Serie A. It's Juventus-Atalanta. Atalanta seemed to be the better side and I believe they went up to lead 2-0 against Juventus before some poor defensive mistakes led to two Ronaldo penalties for Juventus, which is, was it able to help Juventus squeeze a draw which you know, shows how good Atalanta are, that they were punishing Juventus and looked like they were going to beat them for the second time this season. But speaking about Ronaldo, let's move on to his former club, Real Madrid, and Tom with the La Liga fixtures. Yes, so as you mentioned, Real Madrid, they are running away a, bit, a little bit, but we also have teams at the bottom who are potentially getting lost behind as the other teams run away. So let's start off on Tuesday evening, where we see Valencia beat Real Valladolid 2-1. We then see Atletico Madrid draw to Celta Vigo 1-1. This almost definitely sees them out of the race for the title now. I think that was probably already confirmed anyway, but if it wasn't, it is now. Moving on to Wednesday, we have Real Petit uh, getting a 3-0 win against Osasuna. And then Villarreal getting a 3-0 win against Getafe. And then Barcelona scrapping a 1-0 win against Espanyol. And this game saw youngster Ansu Fati lasting, what was it, about four minutes on the pitch before getting sent off. Obviously not ideal for him as he's trying to get up the ranks at Barcelona, but luckily they scraped a 1-0 win thanks to a Suarez goal from that one. Moving on to Thursday, we see Ibar and Leganes draw 0-0. We also saw Mallorca and Levante with Mallorca coming out 2-0 victors on that. And the cap off Thursday we see Sevilla win 2-1 against Athletic Bilbao almost confirming Sevilla's spot in the Champions League for next season uh, moving on to Friday now we saw Granada win 3-2 against Real Sociedad and we also see Real Madrid win 2-0 against uh, Alaves this almost conf- well this sees Real Madrid now run away a bit with the title as I'm looking at now. Barcelona with 36 games played are on 79 points, whilst Real Madrid with a game in hand, I think they play tomorrow, have 80 points. So if they win that, it's not looking it's not going to be looking good for Barcelona. So we'll wait and see on that one. Now yesterday we saw Asasuna beat Celta Vigo 2-1. Barcelona uh, Barcelona keeping up with their win streak at the moment, winning 1-0 against Real Valladolid and Atletico Madrid beating Real Batiste 1 0. And today we saw Ibar beat Espanyol 2 0, Athletic Bilbao beat Levante 2 1, uh, Leganes beat, or oh, at the moment, I think the game's still going on, they're beating Valencia 1 0, which is very important for them as they are 19th in the relegation zone right now. So A win for them would be huge. And then later on, we have Sevilla versus Mallorca. Um, Looking at the table, Mallorca, Leganes and Espanyol are all in the relegation zone. The only real team that could possibly escape would be Mallorca, who are three points off Alaves right now. So it'd be interesting to see out of the three teams who's getting relegated there, but it's almost certain that Espanyol and possibly... Leganes are getting relegated but that is all from the Spanish League and yep yeah, so that is it for the weekly waffle this week thank you for watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Spotify make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and yep yeah, we will be back on Thursday for another video thank you for watching and goodbye That's what-